Chapter 16. Anger, Age, and Fear Make an Unwanted Appearance The rest of the day was wild with activity and confusion. Things were packed and reconsidered and packed again. No one in the village could recall an instance when Ombrick had ventured on a journey away from Santa Plaza, so this was an occasion of great conjecture. North, having been a warrior, understood the need for secrecy. Before he'd come to Santa Plaza, he'd only truly ever trusted Petrov fully. So although Omrik hadn't told North or anyone where they were going, he headed straight to work. <clears throat> With the genie's help, he crafted a new set of swords and daggers forged from bits of the ancient meteor that had marked the founding of the village. Rich with stardust, North remarked to the genie. The old man claims they can ward off any shadow. So let it be done, replied the genie with a bow. The mechanical man's response bemused North. North stood in the middle of Big Root, sharpening the new swords. One must be more cunning than the enemy, he remarked thoughtfully to Ombrick, who had wandered over to see how he was coming along, and Pitch is as crafty as they come. The old man nodded and replied, Clever lad. And though wild Cossack horses couldn't get him to admit it out loud, North basked in the old man's rare compliment. By nightfall, the packing was done, the preparations made, and Catherine had insisted on helping them every step of the way, but she'd been quieter than usual. In fact, Umbrick realized, she'd barely said a word since he'd informed everyone that he and North were leaving. She was overtired, Umbrick decided, so he conjured up her room, making sure to thicken the oval of moss that served as her carpet, and adding an extra drop of richness to her hot chocolate. But that wasn't at all what Catherine wanted. What she wanted, desperately, was to go with them. I'm big enough, she insisted. I could help. What do you think, apprentice? Umbrick asked North as he lit her candles. Should she journey with us or stay, as I suggest? North considered long and hard before he answered. Catherine grew hopeful that North would side with her. He must. He was her champion. But though he hated to say it, North knew the wizard was right. It's too dangerous, Catherine. Your place is here. It is, it's best for you and for us. To Catherine, these words seemed a total betrayal. So when North wished her good night, she refused to respond. He said good night a second time, and she turned her face to the wall in stony silence. North understood. He, too, had never been one to take no for an answer, but her silence hurt him. I can outfight anything that breathes, and yet this child wounds me worse than any bullet or blade, he thought, and steeled his resolve to keep her at home safe. Still, as he left her room, he waved his right hand with an angry jerk that caused all the candles in the room to extinguish, a spell he had just learned and, in his anger, perfected. He tromped up the stairs to the lab and slammed the door. Umbra covered by Catherine's bed, frowning in the dark. The boy is brave, but unruly, he muttered. He may never make a proper wizard. No sooner had he said this than he heard a cough come from the lab, and with a soft hiss, a single candle on Catherine's night table relit itself. A dim but warm glow returned to the room. Just as quickly, Catherine leaned over and resentfully blew out the candle. She flopped back down and pulled the sheets over her head. Umbrick shook his head in amusement. All this drama and anger. Well, that was what youth was like, he remembered. Calm comes with age. And Omrick had been feeling very old of late. The fight with Pitch and the bear had left him weary and uneasy. His confidence shaken. Was he powerful enough to stand up to Pitch again? Would Nicholas be ready to take over if the worst were to happen? North had not been tested as a wizard yet, and this too worried Omrick. But he knew he must stay the course now. Stay focused and steady, Pitch counted on fear, using, used it as a weapon, and Ombrick could not let it get the best of him. He summoned a glowworm to provide a spot of light in Catherine's room, then headed for the lab himself, the climb never having felt so exhausting. But he was pleased to see that North was in the process of double-checking their gear for the trip. They were bringing a vast array of instruments, books, elixirs, potions, and weapons. With everything fit and a smallish backpack, he called it his infinity bag, he designed it to hold whatever anyone put into it. I once packed an entire mountain and castle in it, he explained when North had looked at the satchel skeptically. It did, however, weigh as much as whatever it contained. A problem I've never been able to solve, Umbrick admitted, but that's why your genie will come in most handy. I assume it can handle the load. And then some, North assured him. The genie bowed in agreement. Then we must rest, for we leave at first light, said the wizard and he climbed into the highly unusual assemblage that constituted his bed. North had been dumbfounded when he'd first seen it, a giant globe that swung open in sections as Ombrick neared. The inside was hollow except for a wooden rod near its bottom, which Ombrick stood on. The globe was surrounded by a dozen or so owls on perches with their wings tucked at their sides, their eyes shut. 
Umbrick assumed a stance that very closely mimicked theirs and closed his eyes as well. The globe then folded shut, each owl letting out a quiet hoot as it did. Umbrick was now settled in for the night. Nicholas St. North had slept in many odd places, in trees, on the edges of cliffs, under the bed of a sleeping Maharaja, but those times were about making do. Umbrick clearly preferred this bed. It was his home. Wizards were an odd bunch, it seemed to North, but that's not what he pondered that night. Nor did his mind spin with worries of the upcoming journey and what, that, what they might face. Instead, he thought over and over about Catherine and how she was still angry with him. He forced himself to think of something else. He wondered if the genie actually slept. North softly treaded to the workroom and peered in. Umbrick's globe, high above, sighed with gentle snores. The genie was upright, but seemed to be resting. Good night, genie, North replied, whispered. As you command, came the reply. North hadn't intended it as an order, so the response amused him. When he returned to bed, he began to imagine other things that one could say that the genie would misinterpret. If North mentioned to the genie in passing to have a good day, would the genie try to make a rainy day sunny? Soon he was distracted from Catherine's anger and at last fell asleep, but the genie did not. A small black spider was lowering itself down on a single strand of silk toward the genie's left ear. Spiders were quite, were quite common in Big Root. Umbrick spoke to them often, but this spider was different. It scampered delicately, delicately into the genie's ear. Pitch was indeed as clever as they come.